let's have a little fun with some rock and roll rhythm guitar. Let's do it in E like this. That's an E5 chord. I was hitting what I'm calling eighth notes. Cool. Now let's add uh, a little more action to that. I'm going to add my ring finger on the fourth fret on the two and the four. I'm going to speed it up. All right, so that's, you can also slow it way down like. make it swing a little faster like but it's all kind of the same thing because again it's a power chord an E and a B the B is the fifth note in the E major scale I'll prove it one two three four five five is B B that's a fifth root and fifth and this is a sixth interval. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sixth note in the E major scale is C sharp. So we're kind of alternating between that B and C sharp, or the fifth up to the sixth. people are kind of getting itchy about okay when's it go to the next chord well right now over to the A that's the fourth and then you're going but now where does it go well back to the root the one but you know I think you should get the rhythm down a little bit before you move chords uh, then there'll be the five, the B, which looks like this. That's where, where we're going to have the problem. So, let me address how to move it around before we get all into the chord progression. So, it's pretty easy in an open position because there's open strings. Where we get into trouble is if, let's say you're playing at a church and the the church lady says, you know, they, they give you a CD to learn it in the key of E, and then you come to practice, and the church lady says, oh, no, it's E flat. Didn't you get the memo from the committee, the meeting, or something? Like, what? What committee? You know? Like, no, I didn't. And so now you got to play it in E flat. Well, you, you can't move it down here. It doesn't work like that. You have to accommodate for the open string. So it may be here. That's an E flat, a root, and a fifth. Power chord, which you're getting very familiar with. Make sure you know your power chords. All right, then the sixth interval, so that's index and ring. Pinky hits on the six intervals here. So that's a 11, 13 for my power chord. 15, where the sixth interval hits. And you just got to know that. So to a lot of my students, that is shocking information about spreading out your fingers. And then we start getting uh, guys getting all sad about their hand doesn't work. And uh, there's something wrong with their hand. It's too small. It's too big. It's too fat. It's too skinny. Yeah, I know. But... Uh, Besides all that, you just better get to rocking because we got no time for that. All right, you're just going to have to start moving your hand and spreading it out and build some strength and flexibility there. So if you take it up higher, it's easier. When you go down here, it's like an F. You then, yes, we have a problem because the frets are really wide. Up here, they're much more narrow. So maybe start up high and work it down much more compressed, like a mandolin, you know, you're way up there. So you could go, you know, maybe a 
a, an A is up here. That's a 17, 19, coming down on a 21. A, E, F sharp. kind of making it syncopated a little bit. There's A. Let's take it down to G. Man, that sounds cool. I'm kind of getting into that. Okay, here's F, which is uh, 13, 15, pinky on the 17. I'm palm muting slightly. That makes it sound kind of compressed and tidy. If you if if you're just sawing at it, it's like, why are you yelling at me here? <laughs> it's a little more hushed, kind of controlled, a little more tidy sounding. If you palm mute, that's the side of your hand, touching the string right there on the bridge lightly. Don't smash it. Just to, and you control the sound by how much you palm mute. You can do more or less. Okay, here's E. 12 and 14. You get different sounds where you put the pick. Here's D at 10 and 12. So you need to know these. If we say rock and roll key of C, you have to instantly go. You can't be going, well, uh, yeah, I got that in a book somewhere. Like, the song will be over. The band will be finished. They'll be packed up and loaded and out the door by the time you get your book out, man. So you just have to know it. C, eighth fret, sixth string. B is seventh fret. Now they're getting wider, more stretching. Here's the A. G is pretty wide. F and E. So yes, you need to know them and you need to be able to do that if you want to play some rock and roll. So, to do it, to do that progression in E, uh, let's turn on the metronome, and I'll play it for you, and then you'll be able to maybe, you know, you can copy that if you want. One, two, oops, wrong thing. One, two, three. I'm gonna go one thirty-three. Here it goes. something like that. I just improvised that. But uh, yeah, it's pretty like uh, your instinct will guide you, you know, where to move. And your ears, you know, if you hit the wrong fret, you'll know. But you just, you know, you can rely on that instinct, but you should kind of practice slowly, carefully, knowing E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So you can build those power chords anywhere on the neck and follow any chord progression easily and quickly. Not any, but 
a lot of basic chord progressions with power chords. So if you, you know, I assume we like rock and roll and blues and punk rock and heavy metal a little tiny bit, right? And surf instrumentals, rockabilly, all that crap is built on power chords. You know, so get into that a little bit and uh, let me know how you're doing on your rock and roll rhythm, man. It's important. <laughs>